In ancient biblical lore, the fabled cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were subject to divine retribution, as ordained by God himself, owing to the pervasive wickedness that prevailed within their boundaries. This captivating narrative bears semblance to the account of the Great Flood chronicled in Genesis, underscoring God's righteous anger provoked by the transgressions of humankind. Reverberating through the annals of prophecy and even the New Testament, these two cities have come to symbolize the depths of human depravity and the ensuing divine retribution. The story also finds its place within the pages of the Quran, presenting an alternate rendition of the events surrounding these notorious cities. In the wake of this cataclysmic event, only a solitary man and his family were granted respite from the devastation that befell Sodom and Gomorrah. The profound magnitude of the sins committed by the inhabitants of these cities is a subject of inquiry. How grave were these transgressions? And what circumstances conspired to bring forth such an irreversible outcome? These questions delve into the heart of a tale steeped in moral quandaries and serve as a testament to the enduring legacy of Sodom and Gomorrah. The Narrative in the Bible According to biblical accounts, Sodom and Gomorrah, among the five cities known as the Plain Cities mentioned in Genesis, fell under the dominion of Hedalamra of Elam. These cities, having rebelled against his rule, faced a decisive defeat at the Battle of Sidima, resulting in their subjugation and the capture of numerous prisoners, including Lot, the nephew of the esteemed Jewish patriarch, Abraham. Stirred by the plight of his kin, Abraham mustered his people, undertaking a daring rescue mission that successfully liberated Lot and the cities in question. Subsequently, God, in his omniscience, relayed to Abraham a forewarning regarding the notorious wickedness that had come to epitomize Sodom. Pondering upon this revelation, Abraham beseeched God, asking if he would indiscriminately sweep away both the righteous and the wicked. Commencing with a modest count of 50 righteous individuals, Abraham engaged in a series of negotiations with God each time reducing the number due to the perceived impossibility of finding a sufficient number of virtuous souls within the city. Ultimately, God, even if a mere ten righteous individuals were discovered, inclined towards sparing the city. Alas, Abraham's quest proved fruitless. In response to the abominable state of affairs, God dispatched two angels to bring forth the destruction of Sodom. Lot, extending his hospitality, welcomed the divine emissaries into his abode. However, an alarming turn of events unfolded as the men of the town encircled Lot's house, demanding the surrender of the visitors for nefarious intentions. In a desperate attempt to appease the mob, Lot, regrettably, offered his own virgin daughters, yet their proposition was vehemently rejected, with the threat of even graver harm befalling Lot himself. Swiftly intervening, the angels struck the unruly mob, rendering them blind. At dawn, the angels guided Lot, his wife, and his two daughters, taking them by the hand and leading them away from the doomed city. Urging them to flee to the hills, Lot expressed uncertainty about reaching their intended destination, given the considerable distance. Consequently, he implored the angels to permit them to seek refuge in Zawar. As the morning unfolded, divine retribution befell Sodom and Gomorrah, as well as the entire plain, as brimstone and fire rained down upon them, obliterating their existence. Miraculously, Lot and his two daughters reached safety, but tragically, Lot's wife, defying the angel's warning, glanced back and was transformed into a pillar of salt, forever memorialized. Apart from Sodom and Gomorrah, three additional cities inhabited the same plain, collectively referred to as the cities of the plain, Adma and Zeboim, complicit in their own transgressions, suffered a similar fate, though their notoriety pales in comparison to that of Sodom and Gomorrah. Conversely, Sigur, situated within the same vicinity, was spared divine wrath, its fate diverging from its ill-fated counterparts. Sodom and Gomorrah in Judaism 
While later Jewish prophets have identified sins such as adultery, pride, and ruthlessness in the context of Sodom and Gomorrah, much of the exegesis surrounding the history of these cities focuses on the condemnation of same-sex relationships. According to Rabbi Basil Herring, a former head of the Rabbinical Council of America, Rabbinic literature and the modern Orthodox perspective maintain that the Torah views same-sex intercourse as an abomination. Richter Norton emphasizes the classical Hebrew text's portrayal of the inhabitants of Sodom as cruel and inhospitable towards strangers. Rabbinic texts confirm that the people of Sodom engaged in economic crimes, blasphemy, and bloodshed. Other extra-biblical offenses attributed to Sodom and Gomorrah include extortion for passage across a bridge or swimming a river. Interestingly, the victims of these crimes were severely punished while the perpetrators remained unscathed, with the victims being forced to pay for the bloodshed committed against them. Due to these reasons, the judges from these cities were derogatorily referred to as Shekre Liar, Zayafi Forger, and Mazel Dean, a perverter of justice. Eliezer, who was sent to Sodom by Sarah to check on Lot's well-being, is said to have fallen victim to similar legal injustices. The citizens of Sodom regularly subjected foreigners seeking shelter to torture, leading many to avoid visiting these cities. Homeless individuals who sought refuge in Sodom and Gomorrah faced similar mistreatment. While citizens would donate marked coins to them, it was forbidden to provide any goods or services in exchange for the marked money. After the beggars starved to death, the citizens who had given them the marked money were allowed to retrieve it if they could recognize the beggars. The beggars' clothing would also be awarded as a prize to any citizen who successfully won a street fight against their opponent. Providing bread and water to the Poe was considered a capital offense as well. In one instance, Two girls on Po and the other rich went to a well, and the Po girl gave her pitcher of water to the rich girl, who, in return, gave her a bowl of bread. When this act became known, both girls were burned at the stake. According to the book of Yasher Paltit, one of Lot's daughters was burned alive for giving bread to a Po man, and her cries reached the heavens. Similarly, Another woman in Anma was executed for giving water to a traveler who planned to leave the city the next day. When the scandal was exposed, the woman was stripped naked, covered in honey, and left to be stung to death by bees. Her cries also reached the heavens. Legend suggests that this particular incident served as a turning point that provoked God's condemnation of Sodom and Gomorrah as punishment for her disapproval of Lot welcoming foreigners into their home and her request for salt from the neighbors, Lot's wife, who was a native of Sodom, was turned into a pillar of salt. The Sin of Sodom The historical and contemporary usage of Sodom, Gomorrah, and the cities of the plain as metaphors for same-sex male love has been significant. These cities have contributed to the development of terms like sodomite, often considered derogatory when referring to male homosexuals, and sodomy, which finds application in legal contexts under the category of crimes against nature, as well as the description of sexual acts between men. This association stems from an exegetical interpretation of the biblical narrative, wherein the divine judgment upon Sodom and Gomorrah is viewed as retribution for the prevalence of same-sex love and debauchery in these cities and their counterparts within the plain. However, it is important to note that modern scholars have challenged this particular interpretation, citing Ezekiel 16.49.50 as an alternative perspective. This passage reads, Now this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant overfed and unconcerned. They did not help the Poe and needy. They were hardy and did detestable things before me. Therefore, I did away with them as you have seen. This alternate viewpoint connects the punishment inflicted upon these cities with sins such as pride, lack of compassion for the less fortunate, and a failure to extend hospitality. 
Such divergent interpretations offer additional insights into the complexities of the narrative surrounding Sodom and Gomorrah and encourage a broader understanding of the underlying moral lessons within biblical texts. Sodom and Gomorrah in Islam Lot, the biblical figure, flees the city of Sodom with his daughters, while his wife meets her demise from a falling stone. The Quran contains 12 references to the people of Lut, referring to the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah, and their destruction by God. The Quran primarily associates their destruction with same-sex practices, considering them as the first beings to engage in such acts. However, some contemporary Western scholars argue that the cities were destroyed due to a combination of sexual assaults, violation of the law of hospitality, and committing robberies. According to the Quran, Lot's people deliberately transgressed the boundaries set by God. Lot himself implored God to save him from behaving like them. Subsequently, the angel Gabriel appeared to Lot, instructing him to quickly leave the city as God had commanded to ensure his survival. Lot's wife, however, disobeyed the command and faced the cataclysmic fate that befell the city. Only Lot and his daughters were saved from the destruction. In 2000, a British archaeological expedition led by Michael Sander successfully identified the most accurate coordinates of the ruins of Sodom at the bottom of the Dead Sea. This discovery contradicted the biblical theory placing Sodom at the southern end of the Dead Sea. The British scientists utilized satellite images from NASA which revealed an anomaly in the northeastern water area of the Dead Sea, off the coast of Jordan. In December 2010, a Russian company obtained permission from the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan to conduct geological exploration in the area believed to house the ruins of Sodom and Gomorrah. This location was situated near the ancient city of Babedra, where NASA images indicated the concentration of the city's remains. Subsequently, in 2012, a joint Russian-Jordanian archaeological expedition was launched, selecting the Russian team due to their specialized deep-sea equipment capable of withstanding the salt water conditions of the Dead Sea. Regarding the reasons for the city's destruction, scientists continue to propose various hypotheses, ranging from earthquakes to the impact of a large meteorite. Ongoing research efforts persist to shed further light on this matter. If you enjoyed this video, please visit our channel where you can find more content like this. Support us by sharing this video and subscribing to our channel.